Now I'd like to show you my favorite Aurora forecasting tool. It's called the Ovation model, and it's uh, going to show us um, sort of a measure of the power of Aurora that's coming into Earth's atmosphere, as well as a visual that uh, shows how the northern lights and the auroral oval look around the globe in the northern hemisphere. So this is a map from the Ovation model. Um, it's actually the still image. And if you were to look up the website for this, you're going to see that the, the URL has a .jpg at the end of it. Um, so it's it's actually actually looks like a JPEG. But if you were to refresh this model, you would get an updated view of conditions in near real time. So I love the still model. Let's look at how to read this. So we've got the NOAA logo on the top. Then we see NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center, which is the National Forecasting Agency for Geomagnetic Activity, which leads to the Aurora. It's the Aurora forecast for this is the date and time given in universal time coordinated. So really what we're looking at here is the Aurora forecast for the year of 2023, the month of 09 and the day of 23. So September 23rd, 2023. As I'm recording, that's tonight. Um, but it's also giving us the time in universal time. So 0200 hours. And I hit this one right on the dot, which I love. But we had to convert that for our time zone. Not only is universal time going to feel like military time because, you know, it's going to go up to 2200 hours, 2300 hours, but we also have to convert for our time zone. So think in terms of military time and then adjust the time to fit your time zone. In my case, I'm in the Eastern time zone. And right now that means we need to subtract four hours from universal time. So I'm going to take that 0200, subtract four hours. That's actually going to send me to the day before because this is two hours after midnight, right? So that's going to send me to two hours before midnight, which is 10 p.m. on September 22nd of 2023. So this is the Aurora forecast for 10 p.m. on September 22nd of 2023 once we do that time conversion in Eastern time. 10 p.m., that's only a, a little less than an hour away from me. So this is telling me what's going to be happening tonight, um, just as soon as I can maybe hop in my car and go outside or walk out to my backyard with a camera ready. So really, this is going to give you the details of the Aurora activity when you need it, um, which is why I love this model so much. Let's read the other corners of the graphic, though. So in the top right corner, you have the forecast lead time. The Ovation model can give us a really reliable Aurora forecast with a lead time of 30 to 90 minutes. So sometimes it's only 30 minutes that it's gonna take for this activity to propagate to the earth. And sometimes it's more like 90 minutes. Right now it's saying with this forecast, the lead time is 60 minutes. So in 60 minutes, we can expect the hemispheric power index to reach 29.1 gigawatts of hemispheric power. And that 29.1 gigawatts is in a range from five to 200. Um, so that's a pretty big range. And actually anything below 30 gigawatts is going to be pretty weak for people in my area, which is the Great Lakes region of the United States. Um, but I'll tell you what, as soon as I see that gigawatt number go above 30, I start to get a little bit of hope for our advanced photographers and those along the northern border of the lower 48 states in the U.S., the border of U.S. and Canada. Um, so again, this is the hemispheric power. We've got the abbreviation there for HPI, which is the hemispheric power index. Um, and that's the number we're looking at right there. That gigawatts is a different way to measure Aurora strength that I think is more reliable and very useful in real time. Now let's jump down to the easy part. This color code is gonna tell you um, the probability of aurora and then show you the approximate energy deposition, how much energy is being deposited into our atmosphere from outer space. And that energy from the solar wind is what creates the process that gives us the northern lights. So the probability of aurora, if you ever see it, a real weak sort of thin green oval around the globe, then you've got a low probability. Once that green oval gets... Um, brighter and wider, that's a little bit better. And this is called the auroral oval. It rotates around the globe day to night, day to night. Um, 
So once you see that auroral oval start to expand and go farther south, that means the northern lights, which can usually only be seen in the northern parts of the world, are pushing farther south and getting stronger. Once we see the map turn yellow with a 50% probability or orange with a higher probability, that's a very good sign. And if you see this map turn red, that means it's game time and you should go outside. Now remember this number because like I said, we can refresh this ovation model anytime and get an updated look with this lead time of what to expect from the Northern Lights tonight, 29.1 gigawatts. All right. The other thing to remember here is, though, is that we're looking at the Earth from the North Pole down. So the North Pole is right here in the center. The auroral oval rotates around the globe following nighttime, you know, and when the sun sets, the aurora rises. So just like we have um, sunrise and sunset, the aurora also rises and sets, and it follows that pattern of night and day around the globe in reverse. Um, so if you're thinking, well, okay, <laughs> the thickest part of this oval, though, is not really that close to the Great Lakes region or the lower 48 states of the U.S., that's because we haven't hit the middle of our nighttime yet. So when nighttime, as nighttime goes on, the deepest part of the auroral oval is going to rotate around over top of the United States and some of these areas in Canada, obviously, and then it's going to show us um, just how close the northern lights might be visible. Um, now, in some cases, I've seen this graph issued as a forecast with sort of a new style to the graphic, and it can be a little overdone. Um, red on the map is a good thing, but check out this baby. That looks a little extreme. I think when I see these um, <laughs> these forecasts with this type of graphic and sort of, you know, you've got the blue globe here, it looks a little bit different. Unfortunately, this one seems way exaggerated. Yes, it is possible at this kind of strength to see Aurora that far south, but I don't know. It, it looks maybe a little off to me in terms of the visual. Now, the one good thing about this map, which is actually just a picture that's being used as a forecast, um, is that it does include the viewing line. If you ever see the viewing line on the ovation model, that's telling you, or the view line there, that's telling you from that line, you should be able to see Aurora to your north, low on the horizon. So if you're anywhere above that line, you have a chance to view the Northern Lights. Now, um, this type of auroral oval is more talking about aurora coming overhead. So when we look back at a more realistic ovation model, where is the aurora actually overhead? And then you sort of have to estimate, okay, then how far south could I be to see it low on the horizon? Another thing that happens with the Ovation model is that most people are using the video. It's in a lot of your apps and things like that. And you can sort of play and you can watch how the auroral oval rotates around the globe following nighttime and how the aurora rises and sets. So there's no aurora during the daytime here, but it does sometimes appear at sunrise or sunset right along that nighttime line. And you can watch how the aurora evolves over time. You can sort of watch if it gets a wider band or a, a thinner band. Here it's very weak, there it's getting stronger. All right, so it varies, right? The one thing to remember about these uh, videos though, is if you're using the video, you have to watch the timestamp because what's happening is for the most part in these videos, you're seeing what has already happened in the past play out in front of you. And then if you play the video through and watch that timestamp, okay, we're not even to September 23rd yet. Um, so we're not even to the Aurora forecast yet. We're still looking at past data. Now at the very end of the video, as it rotates around again, you're going to see, okay, the very last portion of this video is giving a forecast. And I actually had this video pulled up a little bit earlier. So um, it's showing a forecast for a little bit earlier. But remember, most of this video is showing what's already happened. Then the last portion, 
and the last second or two is giving you a forecast. Um, in this case, we're actually ahead of the forecast. Um, so let's see, I could, I could go back and I could refresh this page and pull it up again. This is available on the Space Weather Prediction Center homepage. So let me pull up that video again, again, showing you, okay, we're going to play it through. It's going to show us the trends and everything that have happened in the past. Then if you fast forward ahead, okay, the forecast is really only giving us from 0200 on, <coughs> or I'm sorry, let's look again let's look at that again the forecasting portion of this is really only kind of getting into 0200 of september 23rd and up to 0300 0400 okay 0500 0600 or i'm sorry no now we're back at the beginning you see what i mean okay last portion of the auroral oval um the aurora does actually come into our um atmosphere through the North Pole and the South Pole if you want to see the Aurora Australis. So you can find both of those tools out there. Let's go back to our still image at 29.1 gigawatts and refresh. Oh, the power increased just now. So now in a lead time of 61 minutes, we're expecting 29.5 gigawatts. Now that's not much of a jump, but if you saw that number climb five gigawatts, 10 gigawatts, 20 gigawatts, 30 gigawatts instantly, then all of a sudden, you know, okay, the Northern Lights is increasing in power and there could be some activity tonight. So that's the ovation model for you. Sorry about that last run there on the times, but you get the idea. Love this tool. You can find it on my website at kaylinart.com backslash Aurora and good luck on the Aurora chasing trail.